Hi, I'm Carlos Reyes from rcadvisor.com. Uh, I wanted to talk today about pitch stability. This is something that I've, I've learned uh, very few people really understand. And I've given some presentations at local clubs. I actually had a, I think, um, an Ask the RC Advisor segment on the Crashcast some time ago about this. But um, it, it's, you know, understanding how pitch stability works is really not that hard to do. And and um, you know I, I, after I've explained it to to people to club members they're like oh that's how it works so anyway I've got a wing here this is this is the biggest wing I own this is this is actually from a cadet senior that I built like 20 years ago and I covered it in mica film and it's still it's still in pretty good shape I haven't flown this in a very long time but. You know, it's, it's the biggest wing I've got and it's got the biggest airfoil. See the shape that you see here? That's an airfoil. Well, the way an airplane works is that, you know, you need to have... Um, it's a couple of things that you need to do. But, but first of all, you know, if you take an airplane... I'm going to put this down. If you take an airplane and and you measure, you know, the, the wing creates lift, I'm not going to go too much into that, but if you measure where in the airplane is actually creating the lift, it tends to be about 25% of the cord back from the leading edge, which is, you know, kind of roughly where this, there's a, spa, there's a wing joiner, but there's a spar right, right in front of it, it's actually two spars, you know, on top and, and, and below. And, but the thing is that, you know, you can't just look at the wing, you also need to take the horizontal stabilizer and, and, and elevator into account. And, you know, the horizontal stabilizer on, on, you know, in a typical airplane is about 10% of the area of the wing. So, so if you just look at, at that, you know, at that 25%, that's not the whole picture, because you also need to look at the tail. Of course, you know, it might be 10%, but it's, but it's also sitting way back there. And, and what you need to do, you know, if you want to do an accurate calculation of the lift, uh, you need to do what's called, you know, called a uh, weight average. And so you need to take the position of the wing and the sweep and the taper, and then you look at the tail and how big it is and where it's at, and you do the calculation. And on a typical airplane, you, you're going to com come up with a number that, you know, instead of 25%, which is just for the wing, you come up with about 35%, you know, or about 10% further back. And, and the fuselage also plays a role in that, and, you know, so you really have to uh, take the fuselage into account, but it's a relatively minor role. Um, so, you know, mo most of the time the fuselage is just ignored. So anyway, so, so we have roughly, you know, 35% of, of back from the cord and of course, you know, I'm, this, I'm looking at the route, but the, you know, in this airplane, there's no taper, there's no sweep. You know, it's just a very simple rectangular wing. So, so that's, why, that's why also this is a good one to do it with, because the calculation is a lot easier. You know, if the wing has a funny shape, then that totally throws the calculation. So, so we have 35% back as the center of lift of the airplane. And, and the, the, there's another name for that, and it's called the aerodynamic center. Okay? But then, in order for an airplane to be stable in pitch, the center of gravity, you know, which means where, where the airplane balances, has to be in front of that. And, you know, a reasonable uh, stability margin, which is what, what that's called, is 10% of the average cord size. So, so it's really kind of a, a big coincidence that, you know, you, you start out at 25 because that's the center of lift for the wing, you go back to 35 for the center of lift or aerodynamic center for the whole airplane, but then you end up back at 25 because that's that 10% margin that's, that you typically want. So that tends to confuse a lot of people because they think, oh, it's just 25 because that's where it's at. Well, no, it's, it's a little bit more complicated than that. And if you have a flying wing that doesn't have a separate tail, then of course, you know, you don't, you know, you don't, uh, there's no separate calculation for that for the tail because it doesn't exist but so so in a flying wing you know 20 you you, you start out at 25 percent and then you go 10 percent forward so you end up at, at like 15 okay because 
you know, it, an airplane is an airplane. And it should, the calculation is a little different, but it's just because it's got a different shape. So anyway, so we have the center of lift about 35% back, center of gravity, which is again where the, where the model balances, about 25% back. And, and, you know, as you know, the airplane, you know, the amount of lift that it generates depends on the angle of pitch. You know, this is a, a lot of pitch right here. This is uh, pointing down. And, you know, typically you're going to be flying at like maybe 5 and 10 degrees pitch up. Um, so, you know, I don't know, maybe something like this. But I'm, I'm going to exaggerate it to make it easier to see. Okay. So what happens? Let's say the airplane is flying along as in a, in a stable seat condition, okay, which means it's not accelerating, it's not slowing down, you know, it's not turning, you know, it's just going nice and steady. And all of a sudden, the, the wing pitches up, okay? Well, what's, what's going to happen, okay? Well, I, I, I just told you the center of gravity is in front of the center of lift, okay? But now, the wing pitched up, so now you're actually creating more lift, okay? Well, you know, it's like it's, there's a lever arm there, okay? You know, the gravity is pulling down, the lift is pushing up, but the lift just became bigger. Well, there's going to be a, 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 uh, a moment, you know, rotational moment that's going to bring the wing back to where it was. That's how pitch stability works, okay? Now I'm going to give you the, 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 ex the opposite example. Okay, the, the plane is flying along, everything is in a steady state condition, and all of a sudden it pitches down. I, I, I'm going to exaggerate it, you know, I, it, it goes like this. Well, the gravity hasn't changed, that's always the same, but the lift is actually less than it used to be, right? So, uh, so, so what that means is that, you know, what's pu pulling this up is not as strong as it used to be, so, so you have the kind of the opposite moment there, you know, there's a rotational force that's going to bring the airplane back up. Again, that's speech, pitch stability at work. Um, I mean, that's, I, I mean, I, there's some other things I can talk about, but that's it in a, in a nutshell, okay? Well, but there's one thing I need to mention, okay? Well, you know, if you're flying nice and steady and the, gra and the center of gravity is in front of the center of lift, what keeps the airplane from just going forward? That's what the tail is for. Okay, so the tail is is there for balancing out these forces, and and that is why you know any airplane that is stable is going to have a force on the tail. Now, you know there are some airplanes that instead of a force down on the tail have a force up, and you know what I'm working on right now is, is that is a tandem wing. Okay, and that's a little bit different. I mean, it still it still boils down to the same thing. Okay, but in a normal airplane, the tail has a force down because otherwise the you know the lift and the gravity have the you know will make the airplane pitch down. Okay, so the tail you know is holding things in check. Okay, and and again you know when when there's a gust comes and and it pitches up the airplane, then there's more lift. And, and and also of course you know the tail just just went down so that's also going to help bring it bring it level but the main force is what I described I mean you can think of the of the tail kind of as a weather weather vane back there but that's secondary you know the main stabilizing force is the stability margin that you have here and and it shows the you know the the center of gravity and the center of lift of the airplane and it's the distance between them that gives you the, the uh, stability. Anyway, I hope that made sense. Um, hope you found it helpful and until next time.